Oh, hey, there you are. Been looking for you, why? Because I got some updates. No, it's not paint and body this time. This time we've been collecting some things for the past nine months and uh, let's, let's take this, all these boxes, Ride Tech, Heartbeat City, GM, Willwood, all kinds of goodies. Um, everything that will be going on the 69 Camaro. Now, I buy these things when they go on sale. So it's not like I buy it all at once. No, I don't have that kind of cash flow. So I pick and choose when I buy these things. Um, they have good sales throughout the year. Obviously they have better sales at the end of the year, but sometimes uh, I like to pick things up sooner. So we're going to, since I do have the subframe with me, I don't have the car yet, still at the body shop, but I have the subframe. So let's make some room and start putting the front suspension, the, the Willwood brakes, the uh, ride tech, you know, everything that we can so that when the car does get here, I can make it a roller right away and not have to wait for everything. So what does that mean? That means my 2011 Camaro needs to find a new home. No, I'm not selling it. What I mean is it needs to be parked somewhere else so that I can Sorry guys, this really looking at myself is weird. Um, it needs to find a new home, meaning new storage so that I can work and park the 69 here since all my tools are here. I don't have any other space here to put my 2011 Camaro. I don't want it to be uncovered out in the climate where you know the paint job or anything else can get, get ruined. This car does not see rain. It only sees sunny days, um, you know, once or twice a month. So. Uh, I do have a storage unit for it. Just got it. Gonna take it there tomorrow. But for now, I'm, I can pull it out. We'll keep it right next to my awesome, see that 87 Chevy G20 van. Uh, we'll park right next to it overnight. And then tomorrow it'll go to its new home. Anyway, I'm rambling on here. Let's get all this stuff right here unboxed. Let's see what we've got to play with. All right, garage is empty. 2011 Camaro. It's unfortunately outside for now. Tomorrow it'll be covered in a new garage. But there it is. Let's get to work. Let's unbox everything that we need. Let's see what we got to work with. Oh, and the subframe, you know, it's back there. There. So I have a buddy coming over. He's going to help me get it out because I do have the Curry nine inch differential uh back there as well and it's it's too heavy for me to take out by myself it really is um as much as i work out i try to work out i need some help so i got my buddy martin coming by it's gonna help me lift that out take the subframe out from there we can start building well here we have it unboxed i uh, decided only to do the unbox the ride tech and Willwood stuff since that's what we're gonna be working with right now. Uh, I didn't do the heartbeat or any GM boxes because that's gonna be a lot of interior, small exterior things. But right now we're focusing on suspension, okay? So, start with the rear brakes. I did go with the Willwood package. Those are uh, four piston. We have the uh, emergency or parking brake system, rotors, they're drilled and slotted. Um, which I guess are cool, doesn't really matter to me. Um, came with the, the brake cable, the parking brake cable, pads, you know, hardware, everything that you need for that. Um, and then over here is the front brake system by Willwood. And that's the six piston setup. Once again, it's got all the hardware needed, adapter plates, hubs, rotors, drilled and slotted, brake lines. It's a complete kit. Uh, I got this kit from Ride Tech because I figured if I bought it from them, the system would work with their suspension setup. Right? Right, I guess. We'll see. We'll find out. Okay. Um, and then what we got here is their whole coil system setup. 
Um, I did go with Ride Tech because on my 2011 Camaro, that's what I did. I really, really like it. Um, bolted right up, no complaints. So why not stick to with what I know, right? So we got the, um, we got the springs here. They originally sent me some red ones, but I like their blue. So I went with blue. I returned them and asked them for blue ones because, you know, everybody knows Ride Tech is blue, right? I don't know. Um, shocks front and rear and we got the uh, front uh tubular a arms there those, those things are really nice actually um compared to the stock ones that i took off i mean these are are much nicer front sway bar all the bolts adapters front spindles right here um we've got the steering arm pitman arm true this is a whole true turn system that they offer. Okay, so this is supposed to be a lot better than what was originally on the car. Um, so hopefully that will make a difference. And over here is their four link system. All right, that's the whole four link bracket that is gonna go up underneath the rear of the car. Brackets, that'll bolt on to the Curry nine inch, which they already welded on the, the brackets for Ride Tech for me which is awesome because I personally don't know how to weld, um, which would be all these little brackets, and they powder coated it, so that's awesome. Um, fully adjustable um, link bars. I don't know the actual name because it's, it's not in my head right now, <laughs> um, but part of the four link system. So this is their uh, dual adjustable. I believe that their older kit or some of the the old, I don't know, systems or kits that they send only have single adjustable. But anyway, they gave me the, the, the double. So, um, I don't, I'm, just, I'm just saying words, guys. I, I don't know. <laughs> so then we have our um, subframe. Uh, oh, my God. This is, I'm just drawing a blank here. Uh, yeah, then we have our subframe connectors here. Once again, these are bolt up. Went with bolt up because, like I said before, I'm I don't know how to weld. Um, I could have somebody weld it for me, or I can just buy a kit that bolts right up and does essentially the same thing, right? So for me, this made sense. So I got that. Um, pretty much, it's a whole Ride Tech suspension, Willwood brake system, and. You know, modern technology on a 69 frame. Let's see how it does. All right, so let's get this, let's start bolting on some things. Making, let's make stuff happen. All right, so after building the, the front coilovers, um, I did see in the instructions that should mark. You can barely see that white line in this angle. Right here, this is the bottom of the frame. Um, I think from the bottom up. And that needs more clearance for the shock because it will hit. Uh, if you put it in there, I mean, it's just like barely rubbing on it, but it's definitely going to hit. So I'm going to have to, uh, you know, cut that out there. Got myself a new die, grind, die grinder here for, you know, Harbor Freight. So hopefully it'll do what I need to do. And um, yeah, let's just get this cut. So the Harbor Freight die grinder did a great job. I've never used one. It's my first time. So definitely need some uh, practice but you know it's all cut out I did uh, throw some paint on there so that I wouldn't have any fresh metal exposed um, I did test it with the shock of the whole coil over in there made sure that you know it's full clearance not touching in any way so that's good to go now I can actually Put the coilovers in. Imagine that. All right, so we got the coil coilovers in both sides, as you can see here. All right, they're just mocked up, having uh, torqued it down, which the torque is, I think it's eight inch pounds, so it's really not much. But um, control arms are next. Here we go.
All right, after a lot of work, I guess I didn't film it, and, and you know I should have, but I was just so frustrated. Um, I had to pry bar these in. course you know powder coated frame trying to be careful um but i just put that pry bar around a t-shirt and some rags and no marks um lower control arms are in so i'll put the coil over his back uh the i mean it, it, it it's not the problem with right tech right tech makes them perfect it's the frame you know you just don't know what you're gonna get in these cars one side went on fine i wouldn't say fine but less of a fight the other side, wow, off by like a quarter of an inch. But help with a friend, a dead blow, and just hitting that thing pretty hard. It, it went, then it finally slid in, got the bolts in, and now we're good. So let's get the uh, coilovers in and the uh, top arms. All right, it's time to take a break for the night. So the strong arm is in, coilover is in. Had to order a seven eights crowfoot i didn't have one largest i had was a three fourths so that'll be here next day or two i think i could probably get at the hardware store but it's cheaper online so um i got the this torque down 75 foot pounds the other ones are 75 foot pounds as well um so far the fitment is good and uh, a lot of work put into it i am tired um uh, I'm sweating, I'm soaking wet. It's just, mosquitoes are out. Um, so we're gonna call it for tonight and we'll come back and get the, uh, I guess the A-arms on. That's the next part. Stay here and here we go. Okay, so update here. I was gonna install the uh, upper control arms and ran into an issue with this bolt. These are the GM specific bolts for the upper control arms, which do not come with the Rytec um, kit. I, I don't know why they don't provide new bolts. I mean, why not? Why use, I don't know, maybe the old one, maybe GM makes better ones, I don't know. but. I got this bolt from Classic Industries. Actually, I got four. Opened the package. Super excited to install this. And this bolt, you see how it's flare, like right there? Come on, zoom, zoom. Right there. Well, they put the threads too high, so that won't go through the bolt hole. And then look. Sorry, guys. I'm just trying to get this to zoom. Oh, zoom. Right there. Well, you can kind of see it. It looks, it's... It is stripped on the bottom of the bolt. Like, I don't know, maybe it's just too close. I don't know what I'm doing. Here, let me flip this around. Here we go. Come on, zoom in. There it is. All right, it's stripped on the bottom. How do you strip a bolt on the bottom? I can get the socket on top, but it won't go down past that because it's stripped on the bottom. That's flared out. What I'm trying to say here is that this thing is junk. 
So I have to drive 45 minutes back to Classic Industries, return all four bolts, because they said I have to take all four to get a new set. Not too happy about that, but what are you going to do? So instead of doing that today, I'm going to do that tomorrow. I'm going to instead install the True Turn. It's in that box. True Turn system from Rytec. We'll get that going. And at least we can get something done today. Um, and then return these tomorrow. All right. So I went ahead and also bought from Rytec uh, new either arm, new pitman arm. So we're gonna put these on first because we obviously need those for the uh, true turn to connect. So we get these bolted up right now. All right, well today we didn't get too far, but got a little bit done. Those bolts, Eiler, stop focusing on my finger there. Anyway, they're right there. Those bolts um, I did not have. Why? Because when I took off the old original Idler arm, I got rid of the bolts. Because my plan was to replace every single bolt on this car anyway. Um, so I went to the hardware store, got the, the correct bolts that were online, bolted up the power steering box here. Um, I did order these a long time ago, so these are new bolts for the power steering box. Torqued those guys down, uh, torqued that down as well. And I just put on the Pitman arm, so that's cool. Not torqued down yet. That's supposed to go 120, 140 pounds, um, so I stopped to torque that. But I'm waiting to get this whole true turn thing going. And the upper strong arm um, control arms, because I can't torque that castle nut down to 65 pounds, because this thing just... Let me show you. So if I start trying to torque it this just moves all over right so can't get it down to the 65 pound foot pounds that it wants um so when i come back next time i'm just going to kind of get everything up loose and then uh then i'll go through and torque everything down and that way i don't have to fight anything as well so there we have it slowly but surely we're getting there um definitely not as easy as i thought but having fun so the upper strong arms are now on got the, the new bolts i had, had to drive down to classic industries they exchanged those pretty quick for me that was great um so now i put those on torque down the spindle bottom and top Cutter pins are in, but I don't have them bent up yet, just in case, you know, I need to take them apart. Um, but other than that, I mean, everything's bolting up just fine. Um, now let's get this, more of this true turn on since we've got, I guess the front strong arms on, finally. The true turn is now installed. Uh, everything's torqued down fits really well um obviously it's gonna need to be adjusted once it gets on the uh alignment but for now i mean i've got a it's 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 there right um the only thing i did not do is the cutter pins right they're in but i haven't made them you know i haven't bent them yet figure i can do that last um when i decide to finally put some grease in all the the grease fittings, right? So I had to put those on. Um, everything lined up pretty well. You know, get past the, the hard parts. And after that, it was really smooth. So I think that's where I'm gonna leave it today. Um, really happy with this system, it's pretty cool. And uh, we'll continue another day, which Honestly, it would just be the sway bar. And then from there, we wait for the car to come back. So, yeah. Oh, no, wait, wait, wait. I forgot. 
rotors, calipers, those can go on. Um, so we might do those too. We'll see. Front sway bar is in. Uh, not too bad, but the uh, the bolt holes underneath, right in there. Um, I had the frame powder coated, so they, you know, they got into the the threads. So I did tap it um, or clean them out, clean out the the threads. But this one over here, um, tried to torque it down 17 foot pounds. And you know, got that dreaded, uh, let's keep spinning, but it feels tight, but it's not tight. Um, I mean, it's tight. It's probably 10 foot pounds tight, but it's not gonna get any tighter than that. There is a lock washer on there though. Um, all the other ones are torque to spec. I don't think this is gonna go anywhere. Um, I don't know if you guys think otherwise or think I should take it back down and retap or you know, whatever I need to put in there, heli coil, or I think it's fine, but you guys let me know in the comments. Um, so here we are, the sway, sway bar link connector here. Um, got that torqued down to ride tech specs, which is just two turns after the nut. It's flush with the bolt. So there it is up front. Being that there's no tires or anything else in the car, it was really easy to, you know, get under there and maneuver it. I uh, didn't have to really crawl under the car to, to make that happen. So, so install was pretty simple. Uh, as you saw from the time lapse video before, if I included it, <laughs> hopefully I did. If not, then just know that the install wasn't too bad. Um, so there it is. Up next is going to be the rotors and the. Uh, Man, I'm just, another another thing, I, I can't think, it's late guys. Um, rotors and calipers are gonna go on next. So that'll be another day, but um, let me know what you think about that bolt. I think it's fine. All right, so I woke up this morning and um, I wasn't too happy about leaving the uh, the bolt on the sway bar, you know, the, the threads messed up and not torqued down right. It didn't sit easy with me, so started doing some research and um nut certs why didn't i think of that um great idea right cool ordered them up actually i ordered them on amazon and then i didn't want to wait so i went to harbor freight and uh here let me show you show you what i got so i got the harbor freight set because they had the 5 16th mandrel in the in it the adapter um great some nut certs awesome so i went in there and i was like well hole is right here lower control arm is right below it so i could definitely get, this is fine because the the arm would go in between i could get that squeeze it in but i have to drill that hole out to get the nut cert in a half inch right half inch uh drill bit i can't get a drill here so yeah maybe i could use um i have some other power tools i could use but if that didn't work, I'd have to take off, you know, the lower control arm, the uh, the coil over, and then true turn would have to come off a little bit because the castle nut here 
the it's just a lot more work for that one bolt so i did hear about some people sticking tiny hands in there oh i shouldn't say tiny hands because i don't think my hands are tiny or normal on my forearms now you can see the marks yes i put my hand my arm through this hole oh yeah i didn't even look at that before um through that hole and i found this flange nut the right threads this is why i don't throw away hardware you know it even had some little ridges on the end there and which was perfect so i reached in there i screwed it in grabbed the ratchet box wrench put it right on top of there so then i didn't have to have my hand so far in held it torqued it down 17 foot pounds it's not going anywhere now so if i ever have to remove the sway bar and i can't figure out why that's not coming undone on the passenger side well you guys can remind me hey don't forget you put a flange nut in there and uh you need to get a box wrench in there to get it out i don't know if i'd be able to put my hand in there with the front end on though so that might be tricky but it's on there it's not coming out let's leave it all right let's move on now to the rest of this work all right it's time time to open up this willwood box and get these front brakes calipers rotors installed so let's unbox it let's get it on here All right, quick recap here, or I guess update, not really a recap, but so I put the uh, rotor and the rotor adapter on. I got, these are the front wheel hubs. So I did put the larger bearing, I got it all greased up. Need some better lighting in here. Is this better? Maybe. So, um, greased it up. I've never actually, oh there, look at, there's the light. I've never actually packed a bearing before. So of course I watch YouTube videos how to do this and yeah, there's awesome tools that'll do this for me, but I wanted the experience. So I packed my own. Um, that's the, the, the larger one. I still haven't done the, the smaller one yet. Uh, put in the studs, put in some red Loctite, torque those down. I had to buy a vise. I don't have, I'd never had a vise. Um, but I couldn't torque this down or these down correctly without a vise. So I bought one, Harbor Freight, but I got the more expensive one. What is this? Doyle, Doyle rules, no, it's O'Doyle, whatever. So I got this, um, it was on sale, so why not? And yeah, I don't have it bolted in and I should, but it's doing the job for now. So this is where we're at. We'll finish the hub assemblies. I'm following the direction, so whatever these things tell me to do, that's what I'm doing.
here. It looks like Jolly Lunches, but mounted. Yeah. Okay. So now remember, this edge right here is going to go in there. You got. You want to get the grease in there. See this right here? So I'm going to go like this. I'm going to take this for edge. I'm going to squeeze it like that. And turn it. Squeeze it. So see how it's going in? And just keep doing that over and over and over and over. And try to get it on the edge, though. Not, not all of it at one time. So you just want to do this one edge. Okay. So right now you're getting all in the middle, right? That's all over. Put that glob there. Okay, see how I'm just going to take this edge, and then right on the edge of there, and just go boop, and then turn. Okay. I'm going to turn it a little bit. Yeah. It's going to be slimy, I know. the spindle nut. Uh, according to Ride Tech, it's 12 foot pounds while rotating. So let's get to 12 foot on my torque wrench here. It's almost there. There we go, 12 foot pounds. Um, oh, I need an adapter. This is a quarter inch. So while spinning, I want to get to 12 foot pound torque. Oops, I hit something. Let's check it. Oh, we're good. Still good. All right. Let's go this way. All right. Keep spinning. Keep spinning. I think that's it. Yep. Not much at all. 12 foot pounds. All right. And then from there, it says to back off. So, back this off. It says to put the cotter pin in, but I'm just going to torque it down one more time. As we're spinning, I, I don't know, this is my first time. I don't know. I'm just making stuff up, guys. So, honestly. it off so we put the cutter pin in. So it should just be right there. Yeah, right. There we go. Alright, looks good to 
to me. Cotter pin is in there. And we'll do the same on the other side. All right, so same thing here. I'm gonna torque this down while we spin it. Spin it this way. Tighter. All right, just like I did the other side, I'm gonna back off of it. There we go. I'm gonna retorque it one more time. Make sure it's seated. Okay. We're gonna back it off. This one has a little bit more to back off right there, actually. Yep, there it is. Lines up. Castle nut in the hole. Cotter pin in. Done. Bend the cotter pin and uh, put the cap on. Cap, hub cap, hub cap, spindle, hub cap thing. Let's put it on by hand, I guess. Let's see it lined up. There we go. It has an O-ring on it. So there we go. Alright. That's it. Done. Alright, so let's bring you guys in here. There it is. Completely assembled Willwood. Front disc brakes on a Ride Tech suspension for a 69 Camaro. All right, there's the clearance for the bracket. That's for the um, caliper. So I did the three shims that they suggested in the instructions and actually ended up being perfect. So it was good. So thing spins nice. Greased up nice, looks great. Other side's done too. All right, there we have it. So front, ride tech suspension, coilovers, sway bar, strong arms, and Willwood disc brakes. These are the Dyna Pro 6. Ride tech sells them, so I got them from them. Um, yeah, they are six piston, so everything's lined up, shimmed up, red lock tight. Looks really good. Happy with it so far. All right, guys, that's gonna be it for this episode. Uh, front suspension's looking good. It's all bolted up on the subframe. Can't wait to get it on the car. But um, stay tuned for more updates. And like they say in YouTube land, like and subscribe, and I really appreciate it. And we'll see you guys soon.